Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. How are you guys doing? My name is Franny, and welcome to Foxy Stitches. Hi. This is my very first Friday Sews video. <laughs> I love the concept of Friday Sews, and so I was just like, you know what, let me just go ahead and jump on this bandwagon. So here I am. Uh, first, before we get started, if it's, this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. All right, so let me start by saying I am so excited. I have so much that I want to share with you, uh, but I will try not to go overboard and uh, try to keep the videos as short as possible because I can probably tell you guys this video might end up being an hour if I don't keep it together. So I'm going to try really hard to focus on just the finer details, stay focused, and make this video straight into the point and try not to get carried away. <laughs> but I love sewing so much that, you know, I can talk about it all day. So if this ends up being an extremely long video, which I'm truly going to try not to do that, I apologize in advance. Okay, so... There's a few things, I'm, I'm trying to set up all the videos so that uh, kind of uh, it's organized and you know what to expect when you see an alert. So uh, my plans for this video is to discuss my, some of my makes, what I currently have on my sewing table, and then I also would like to share some of my crocheting um, projects, so some of my crochet projects so that you know, I can really share with you guys because my crochet products really projects go hand in hand with my sewing usually. So, all right. So, first up, my sewing makes. I sew a lot for my um, little ones, my kids, and um, I do sew for myself, but I haven't really been in the mood to sew a lot for myself. I have a few projects that I've made that I'm going to do some reviews. Um, and I will not include them in my Friday Sews videos. So these are all of the makes that I've made that I don't plan to make a separate video for because I just don't want it to be redundant. Okay, so first up, I made this gorgeous skirt using um, pattern Butterick 6836. It is a cute skirt pattern. I've actually made this pattern twice, but this was like the first, when you look at the pattern envelope, you'll see there's like an overlay on one. I made that one uh, and kind of really worked on the fit for that to accomplish this. Now this is just a simple uh, skirt, straight skirt with a split in the back. So I absolutely love this this um, fabric I purchased from Joann's two years ago. I am really trying to sew my stash because I have, it's, it's getting out of control. Let me just say it. My stash is getting out of control. Um, and there's always something new around the corner. And I'm always like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But really, I need to start looking at my stash. So I've really been focusing sewing on in from my stash. Um, earlier this year, I um, did the 30-yard challenge, and I struggled with that. But I feel like I just need to go ahead and do that again. But that's a little topic. Back to the skirt. This is Butter 8 6836. This is just the straight skirt, pencil skirt. I love this. It has a large waist band um, and it is a back zip the back it was super easy to install usually i i really hesitate with zippers any closings at all because i want them to look perfect and professionally installed um, but this one i literally just it was it was super quick to the point that i was like did i install the skirt just but I installed the skirt. It was super quick and easy. Um, this I love this pattern um, because this the it was easy to fit, um, and this is why it has the front pattern piece, and then there's a front side piece. You can it's really hard to see, but there's a front side piece right here. So this is the front the width of the front side piece, and then you have the back pattern piece, which has darts. 
and then it's the waistband. So with the fact that it has these front panels or side piece, it made this pattern so easy to fit. I enjoyed making this. I will definitely make this pattern again. Highly recommend it. Um, I actually need to true up the pattern piece um, now that I found a perfect fit so that it can be officially a TNT. If anything, I might tweak the waistband just a little. It's almost a little too tight, but it's just snug, just right. Um, if I wear like some Spanx under it, it fits perfectly, but I feel like I should just be on the safe side and add just a little bit more room to the waistband. But other than that, beautiful skirt, I love this. Okay, then I made myself another pair of shorts. Um, and this was more like a Muslim. I decided to make Simplicity 1165. You guys, you know that's my favorite shorts pattern. And I noticed the other day that I've never made that pattern in a woven. I always make it uh, with knit fabrics. Um, I ended up purchasing this fabric from Joann's. This is a terry, French terry. Uh, but it's so soft. See, a little bit of stretch there. It is so soft. Um, and I made this one because I was trying to make, I plan on making these shorts again in a French terry and using the same pattern. I kind of, and I kind of wanted to work on the fitting for this. So I made a wearable muslin. This pattern I love because it has the pockets. It has a waistband that's elasticized. I need to put the other elastic in. Um, and then I haven't hemmed it yet. So that's all that's left to do for this is hem it and install the second band of elastic. This is truly just a wearable muslin that I'm going to wear around the house. But it's such a quick and easy make. It's the pockets like the yoke, the front pattern piece, and then the back pattern piece. I definitely need to try this pattern um, in a woven. So that would probably be something that I'll work on um, because the pattern is a pair of shorts and then I think like Bermuda shorts and then long pants so I can make 1165 in a woven for the winter. Um, so yeah, that's what I made. Second make. Before I continue, please excuse all wrinkles. <laughs> Disclaimer, please excuse all wrinkles wrinkles and I'm saying that right before I show you this next make the, the next few makes I'm going to discuss are the items that I made for my girls and so I literally washed this last night and pulled it out the dryer this morning so excuse all the makes this is simplicity 9219 I made this pattern three times you guys three times the pattern is a top tank, um, shorts, pants, and a dress. It's a nightgown. Um, I did not make it for, it. the pattern envelope it shows that it's designed for adults. I made some small modifications and now it, it, I used it to make a um, nightwear for my girl, uh, my girls. And so when I made this, I had to shorten the bodice and I had to shorten the length again excuse the wrinkles. Um, but this was such a queasy, quick and easy make. It was the front band and the, the front piece and the back piece. There's two ways to finish this pattern. The first way to finish it was to um, install store-bought bias tape and the other option was to like narrow him. I ended up just making bias tape for my daughters to finish the neckband and the the armhole and so I just use this fabric to make um bias binding so that's what I did with this one this thought I cut off all the threads but I guess I didn't but yeah such a cute and quick make this is the first one um this is a pop fabric that I purchased from Joann's I love pop fabric from Joann's officially um and it, it this project came together in like 30 minutes at the most and I was like cut throw it together. The longest part was making the bias binding, bias tapes, but other than that, very quick and easy make. So my daughter loved the first make so much, her dress so much, that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and make this pattern again. And instead of making the dress, I made the tank with the shorts. 
I used this fabric that I purchased from Joann's. And here's the shorts. The shorts is literally the front piece, the back pattern piece, and then you roll over the top part of the, the shorts to make the casing for the elastic. So very quick and easy make. And then I made the tank and I hacked it. So for the tank, uh, it was the front piece and the back piece and I decided to add a little detail in the back. So I took a piece of the fabric, ruffled it and attached it to the back. So in the front, it just looks like a standard tank, but when you turn it around, bam, there's your cute little ruffles. This is so cute. My daughter loves this one so much. So yeah, it's just, it was just a quick and easy make. I cut the back piece of the tank a little bit shorter than the front, about three inches, two and a half to three inches. And then I just took a long rectangular strip of fabric and uh, ruffled it and attached it to the back. And then after that, I uh, sewed the side seams. For, for this make, I didn't have enough fabric to make bias binding, so I just narrow hemmed um, the neck and the armhole. So. So also quick make. The hack was super easy and quick. Um, so that's what I did for this one. Did I mention I made this pattern three times? Yes. Uh, and then uh, I made this one again and I literally, like this is hot off the sewing machine. Okay. And this is probably the last one I'm going to make, uh, the last time I make this pattern for a while because I'm causing some, a little bit of jealousy. It's not intentional. Uh, because I haven't made this pattern for my other girls. I would like to make them um, pattern the some night gear out of different patterns. That way I can see which one works best. But for Simplicity 9219, the copy that I have is officially my uh, middle, my second youngest daughter's tried and true. So, so I made this one yesterday. And this is the shorts again. So this is the front piece, the back piece. This fabric also purchased at Joann's. This is the Pop Space Doodle Jersey. All of the fabric that I use this is Jersey fabric, but this is the Pop Space Doodle Jersey um, that I purchased from Joann. It's super cute. It has moons and planets. And actually it's in line with the cloud the stars and the uh, moon theme so I guess I'm going for like space theme or maybe this is more like sweet dreams to me so maybe we're going galactic it's still very cute so this is the front and back piece I, I literally already installed the elastic and closed it last night very quick make and then I made the tank again but without any modifications so here is the tank as designed in the pattern envelope in the pattern so yeah so 92 19 is officially on i love list for my youngest daughter i made burda kids burda kids 94 38 out of this pop fabric which is snails this is a jersey print it's a um from joann's this is a pattern that i've made before um, many, 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 many moons ago. Um, I say it like I'm, <laughs> I've been so awake for like eons. Uh, but it's one of the first patterns that I made and I made it when my daughter was a baby. I pulled out the envelope again and I decided, you know what, let me make this again because it was a quick and easy make. I ended up having to size up one size because I was not confident that this dress would fit um lengthwise and it fits perfectly so sizing up was the right path to take and then as i was cutting the pattern pieces i was about to cut the sleeve and i realized shoot i didn't have enough fabric so i had to do some frankenmuffin and i cut the top of the pattern piece for both sides and then i took another piece of the fabric and cut the bottom piece but I added five eighths of an inch so that I would have a seam allowance so that's why you see the seam right here 
But other than that, this is exactly the way it was designed in the pattern envelope. Um, this is the top, it's elasticized, and then the sleeves are elasticized. I did not use the elastic guide in the envelope. I literally put it on my daughter, tried it out, and then cut the elastic with a little bit of uh, space so that I could overlap and sew them together. Um, but it's such a cute dress. This is just a dress that she lounges around the house in. She loves it. Let me tell you, love it. And then she asked me, when am I making her another one? I'm like, we need to find fabric. <laughs> and the goal is, like I mentioned earlier, that I need to use fabric that I have in my stash because I have lots of fabric in my stash. So this is this. Okay, so that's all for my sewing makes, but I want to include what I made crocheting. Um, and it goes in line with my home decor. It's a new season and it's time for me to change my home decor. I'm a little bit behind and so my home decor right now is turquoise and gray and white. Um, and so this year I'm going to change it up. I'm going for a mustard and like a burnt red theme, which I, I see it in my mind and it's just so beautiful. So to really start the transition of my um, living room, I decided to crochet a blanket because uh, I last year I saw a few of the blankets, but I didn't. There was one that I saw and it was at Marshall's, but I didn't pick it up because it was dirty, like just dirty. It looked like everyone was walking over it and they just decided to roll it on the floor. It was dirty and I'm like, I'm not going through that. Um, I'll just buy it next year. So here we are next year and I can't find it in stores anymore. And I'm like, look, I know how to crochet. Not an expert. I'm not like advanced, but I can, I consider myself a beginner uh, almost um, intermediate so I can throw together a crochet blanket so I went to Michael's picked up some uh, yarn chunky yarn and I decided to crochet my blanket and then when I was online looking at different blanket ideas I found this hand knitting video for a chunky blanket and I followed it so I will try to include it in the the description box but here is the blanket that I made it is huge so I can only show you a small section of it um, but this is hand knitted it is so soft and I'm laughing because I'm thinking about my kids how when they go in the living room they instantly grab this blanket we have throws downstairs in the living room but they instantly grab this one so that's always a good sign um, but I absolutely love it. It took a few hours to make, but it was definitely worth it. It's huge. Like, I, I think I went a little overboard and um, I used eight balls of yarn, I think. Maybe eight, seven or eight, I think. Um, but yeah, so this is the first piece for my um, living room. And so I'm just going to add from there. I picked up some pillow patterns so that I can make some decor pillows. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. And I need to hurry up and get it done because next, like Christmas is right around the corner. It's going to be time to decorate for Christmas. And I have so many things on my mind that I want to make for Christmas. So I just need to get this together. Uh, my goal is to have my living room completely um, decorated within the next week so that I can have a few weeks with the mustard color theme and then we'll I'll start making my Christmas decor. All right, so that is this one. All right, so I have a few projects currently on my sewing table. The first one is for my kiddos. I made this, was it the end of last year or the beginning of this year? I made these shorts. This is the pattern emporium honey bun shorts they're so cute this is the the sport length they come in different lengths i i truly saw this pattern piece and was super excited because it is 
a flat front waistband, but an elasticized back waistband. So when I made, and I think I did make this last year, I made this one as a muslin. This is just some quilting cotton that I picked up from Joanne's. It's super cute, isn't it? Look at it. <laughs> and the pink polka dots. I don't know if you can really see it, um, but it's pink polka dots. Uh, and I'm going to make it again. So I plan on using this pattern to make a few bottoms for my girls, each girl. Um, and this is really going to be an opportunity to work on fitting because I haven't made this pattern for all of my girls. And this is, this one is actually perfect for summer, but it's getting cooler out. So I'm going to be working on these. So this, this will essentially have I'll probably make two or three of these uh, shorts per child. And so it's the flat front waistband. Again, I did give you all this disclaimer, excuse the wrinkles. Uh, flat front short waist, flat front waistband. There's pockets, it's super cute. And then uh, the back has this yoke right here. And it's elasticized waistband. I love the details of this pattern. So um, that this is the pattern Emporium Honey Bun shorts that I'm going to make again. Probably like four of them. Um, I might do a separate video for this one because I'm going to make it for... Um, actually, just let me know if you would like a, a separate video for this pattern because... Since I'm making it for at least two of my girls, it's it will be interesting to see what adjustments I have to make. And then next on my sewing table is this pattern right here. I purchased this at Walmart. This is the It's So Easy, It's Simplicity W0193, and it's an apron. It has the adult size and the kid size. I'm planning to make um, the kid size. I'm going to make it for my youngest and my second to youngest. I'm causing confusion every time I mention my girls. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to make the two kid versions. The first one is going to be made out of this um, fabric, that a quilting cotton that I purchased from Joanne. I have um, flame retardant spray that I am going to spray on these. Um, so I'm going to treat them first. Why is this upside down? Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Don't judge me. <laughs> so I'm going to make Moana. Uh, and this, I'm pretty sure I have enough fabric to make the apron with this. I haven't really read over the, the pattern to confirm if I have enough. If not, it's okay because I will color block. I will color block like there's no tomorrow. So that is the first apron. And the second one, this one I'm truly not sure if I have enough. I'm going to use this to make um, an apron for my youngest using this unicorn pattern that I have from my stash and I have no idea if I have enough. If not, I can, I will color block. So that is what I have on my sewing table. So more on that coming soon. And then I am going to focus on some of the items that I plan for my make nine of 2022. I cut some patterns out, but I really need to pair them with fabric and then get the ball rolling with them. So. And I think I still have a little bit of fitting to do for one of the items. So I'm going to work on some Make 9 um, and update you guys later on those. So that was a lot. And I feel like this video is going to be super long. But I've been busy. I have my sewing mojo back. So that's a great thing. Um, when I sew, I like to either listen to music or listen to an audiobook. And so um, I've recently been listening to an audiobook. It's uh, The Final Gambit. It is the third book of the Hawthorne Legacy Theories, series. And the concept of this series, the very first book, which is Hawthorne Legacy, this young lady who's in high school, homeless, lost her mom, has been living with her sister. Um, and so the young lady, Avery, gets a letter one day. And this man that she does not know, has never met before, has left them his all of his money. She's inherited all of his money. This man is like stupid rich. <laughs> like millions on millions, 
billions of dollars and he just left it for Avery and she has no idea how she's connected to this man. And this man, Hawthorne, loves riddles and puddles, puzzles. And so she has to solve her way through a lot of clues and a lot of games that the this man has left behind to figure out how she's connected to this man and figure out all the clues. And on top of that, he's disinherited his family who lived with him in the same house. He left, I think, collectively, all his children and grandchildren about a million dollars total, collectively. So, such a good book. I'm officially on the third book, which is The Final Gambit. I think this is the last book, so I believe this series is a trilogy, but just it's just amazing book so far, and I'm enjoying it. Um, I listen to audiobooks when I'm sewing easy makes. More complicated makes, I will most likely listen to music or just not listen to anything at all. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah. And so the last thing that I want to discuss is uh, my patterns. I have a lot of patterns in my stash. And I realize that I don't have place to store them anymore. And I have a lot of space for them. Um, so it is time for me to unhaul. And so I've decided that before I can purchase more patterns, I need to unhaul some patterns. My patterns need to actually fit in the area that I have de dedicated to store them. So I've pulled out about 20 some patterns so far. It's, it's not a huge dent, but it is a dent. And those patterns I'm going to, I think I'm either going to give some away um, put some on like Etsy or Distashify or something along those lines. But the idea is I'm going to unhaul patterns um, and then purchase. So the idea is I just un unhauled 20. So I truly want to do that because I wanted to make room for the new patterns. And this is the patterns that Nomi patterns have released. Nomi is a pattern company that Mimi G started up um, with creators in the Instagram community. And I love so many of, like, I would purchase all of the patterns, but I have to be realistic. And I need to make sure that I absolutely purchase patterns that I know I'm going to make or will make in the near future. So there's a few patterns that I truly want. Sadly, the Nomi patterns have not made it to my um, local Joann's. However, um, I am going to go ahead and unhaul the 20 patterns that I've set aside so that I can add a few of the Nomi patterns. So on my wish list, I have, an, uh, off the top of my head, the Beauty J'adore pattern that I would love to get. I absolutely love the jacket or the coat. Um, the Brittany J. Jones pattern, absolutely beautiful. I love the top and the pants. I want to make both. Uh, Sins of Many, I believe. He has this amazing bomber jacket that I want. Um, there's another creator where he has like this cardigan top, or button up top with pants. I absolutely love the pants. So I would make that for my son. Oh my goodness, there's just so many. So after this clip, I will just put my wish list of the Nomi patterns up so that you guys can see which patterns I plan to purchase when they finally get to my local Joann's. Um, and then that's it. Yes. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching my very first Friday So. Now I'm kind of freaking out because I have to work and I need to edit this video and have it up so that I can actually have it up for Friday. Uh, and so if I don't get edited today, it's going to end up getting uploaded tomorrow, which is Saturday. That's not going to work. So I'm kind of freaking out by right now. So I'll, I'll try to limit my editing. But that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I absolutely love this sewing community and I love all the things that I see that's going on all new and I want to make sure that I'm contributing and doing my part in this community. Please feel free to put questions in the comment section below. Which patterns would you like to pick up? Which of the projects that I've made have you made or do you have on your plans? And I look forward to you talking to you guys really soon. Bye!